In the midst of isolation, social distancing, and limited resources, how do you stay inspired to contribute to something bigger than yourself? Are you an ambitious vet looking to figure out how to use this time wisely to come out more valuable, impactful, and maybe just a little bit more fulfilled? Well, this conversation is going to be vital for your ongoing mission success. In a hot old garage and then filling all of these bins like full of flip-flops and then pushing it out the door and just looking back at it and going, that's five years of school for little girls in Afghanistan. Holy cow. Today's show is brought to you by Brute Force Sandbags. Now, are you an ambitious vet that's in the trenches day in and day out, getting sick and tired of the same old fitness apps? Trust me, I got you. Are you finally ready to start training like you did while you were in the uniform outside of it tactically and working every muscle group inside your body? Well, look no further. These sandbags are found anywhere from garage gyms to CrossFit boxes to the U.S. Navy and will humble even the most ambitious vet out there that uh, thinks they're mentally tough. I promise you. So, Best thing about these things, these are 100%, 100% American-made Ambitious Vet. They're built from the toughest training material on the planet that we all know, and it's free shipping. They got a great warranty on them, and if you don't like it after you buy it, hey, they get it. It's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're ready to train accordingly, check out Brute Force Sandbags by clicking the show notes below. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet Podcast, where we believe that if you desire more than you have in any area of life, you have to become more in the process. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Corps combat veteran turned social entrepreneur, family man, and personal professional development leader. On this show, I dive into the trenches with big thinking and conscious veterans who know what it takes to not only pay the bills after the military, but really live with a sense of purpose, satisfaction, and career fulfillment we all desire most after. Financial stability is no longer a challenge to overcome. Grab your pen and paper. It's time to gain the golden grenades needed to break through your fear barriers and live a life of purpose with passion. It's time to get into the trenches, dig, dig into your purpose, and, and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vets? We're right back into the trenches again. We're excited to uh, bring you yet another thought leader inside the veteran community, Matthew Griffin. Matthew is an Army Special Forces veteran, CEO of Combat Flip Flops, a $1 million retailer of shoes and accessories. He's also known for his TEDx talk and his successful appearance on ABC Shark Tank, where he not only secured one shark, but three, including Mark Cuban. I'm excited to dive into his mindset during these times of chaos and figure out how we can consistently grow into the trenches and make the impact we're all committed to making in our career, lives, and businesses. Matt, are you there, brother? I'm here, man. Great to be here today. Oh, man. It's a pleasure. Um, can you go ahead and fill the gaps inside of that introduction? Let us know something, uh, something personal that very few people know about you. Uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a couple quick clarifications there for the military guys that get into this, but I was a special operations ranger, so I was in the 75th Ranger Regiment, not special forces, and uh, when I did Shark Tank, you know, I did it with my ranger buddy, Donald Lee, so it wasn't just me on there, it was another guy who was with me. Nice. Awesome. Um, uh, but just in between that, you know, I'm from Iowa, you know, just like most guys, I wouldn't say the best childhood, not the worst childhood, and joined the army to get away from it all, and you know, left Iowa when I was 18 and never looked back. Uh, did three to Afghanistan, one to Iraq, and been through multiple jobs uh, since leaving the military. And I really just found my niche and hitting the groove. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Being a, another, you know, Midwestern boy from uh, St. Louis, Missouri, man, I can appreciate the uh, the genuineness of just, you know, just ain't nothing special, man. I'm just out there making things happen, and uh, you've been making things happen in a big way. So. You know, Matthew, man, you said that you've been on four deployments, right? Um, you know, you've been in Afghanistan, um, you've been in Iraq and stuff like that, doing God knows what inside those um, conflict areas. And now, man, you've, you've brought a mission into a conflict area where you used to bring bullets, but now you're bringing business and you're building, a, you know, a, an economy in some of these 
third world countries. Can you walk us through that mindset shift that had you go from going in there as a potential perceived enemy to now building an economy inside those conflict areas, brother? Yeah, it's, um, it's a team effort. Like a lot of the guys on our team here who have served feel, you know, the same way. Uh, we went over there, we lost all a bunch of friends. We came back and really what was, what was the reason why, what's the positive legacy that we're leaving behind? Um, you know, when, when we walk away from that country, did our, did we as service members keep the promises of our country to the people that we met with on the street and made friends with and made deals with? And, you know, are, are we keeping our promises? Um, I know a lot of people, they feel like when they got back from service, they just, they don't really feel that way right, which kind of taints them on their deployment experience. Uh, and then, you know, fortunately or unfortunately for me, like I had a job where I was traveling all over the world uh, in and out of conflict zones, uh, putting in clinics and getting medical supplies in and out. And I, I saw a much different side of these areas when you're not walking around in body armor, toting a rifle, you know, rolling out of a, you know, an armored vehicle into somebody's house in the middle of the night. Like it's a much different experience when you go there. And in all these places that I went, I found out that they're people just like us. Like their families, husbands, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters. All they want to do is they want to get up. They want to do the best they can for their family and they want to go home. And that's not an experience that the United States military typically like gives you when you're downrange. Mm. Um, and I, I just got saw a much different side of the country that I was just never exposed to as a young adult. Right. And, you know, when you're there and you see that side of it, you're like you, you, that only makes you question your experience there more. Um, and the, the message that I kept seeing and the thing that kept getting shoved in my face wherever I went is the only thing that provides security is business. Mm. That's it. And if, if we're going to do this as a country, if we're going to do this to keep our kids from having to go and fight in the same wars that we did, then we should start some business. Um, and it just, kept hitting me all over like everywhere I went it was the same thing and mm -hmm. one day I landed in a combat boot factory in Kabul Afghanistan I saw a flip-flop sole punched through a combat boot uh, a flip-flop thong punched through a combat boot sole like the idea came together the URL was available my buddy was down to help and we started and that was it and it's just like when it hits you it hits you when you like I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur I've always wanted to start a business I always wanted to do all these other things but I was working for somebody else gaining all those skills and when it finally hit I was like okay now this is time to do this let's go mm. and um and that was it and like our whole mindset was is you know we're going to go back as service members now we're going to change their perception of Americans you know we're not going to solve the war with flip-flops but we're going to be one of the first companies who you know tip this wave in the right direction and show people that it's actually possible because people won't do it unless they can see that it's successfully being done. And if we prove it, then other people will follow. And we're seeing that we saw you Rumi spice making Afghan saffron flying scarves, making uh, other scarves. And you see a whole bunch of veterans now going back and starting these businesses. And it's more than just us now. Yeah. That's awesome, man. You broke the four minute mile. Now people are figuring out how to run it faster. And, uh, you know, you've done, you've done a really good job. I mean, I was reading on notes and stuff like that. Haven't you, uh, right after the shark tank episode, um, didn't you fund over 200 years of school for Afghan girls, man, after that show? And people talk about shark tank. It's just a weird experience. So we're this like super small, nobody company. We get a cool article published about us. A producer reads it, invites us to be on the show. We go on the show and like, we're still struggling. Like we, we have no business <laughs> experience. We've never made yeah. footwear. And now we're on the biggest thing in America, getting ready to hit like the biggest retail wave any company can ever ask for, right? On a Friday night. And um, it, we were just blessed. Like our, our, all of our friends and our family were there. My business partner, my brother, Andy, Lee, our families were there and, uh, big conference room table at my buddy's office. He loaned us for the evening and the show went off. Our website went crazy. Like we were selling all kinds of stuff. Everybody was cracking bottles of champagne and you know, we did more business in 36 hours than we did in our entire company history. Holy and cow. it was really cool because that many people bought, but what it, what it was was you know, we were still fulfilling out of my garage behind my house, like 30 feet behind my kitchen. And, uh, you know, a freight truck would pull up in the morning and dump off pallets of flip-flops. We would inventory them in, get them all into the shelves in the garage. 
you know, we'd have that done by nine or 10 and then we do all our pick tickets. And then by the end of the day, we had four or five people in there just sweating in a hot old garage and then filling all of these bins like full of flip flops and then pushing it out the door and just looking back at it and going, that's five years of school for little girls in Afghanistan. Holy cow. Right. And at the end of the day, everybody just looking at that pile, standing there sweaty and hot and like, just like that feeling of pride that comes with it was, was really cool. Like it's, it's good. Yeah, man. I mean, it's kind of like, that's why you guys started the company, right? It was a mission to serve a greater purpose. And at that time it was kind of, it was, it was realized, right? It was like, wow, this is becoming real. Um, and having three sharks that are now going to hold you accountable to scale this thing to the level that, you know, it's, it's gone to me and it's just been really impressive. So like for any ambitious vet that's out there, that's, looking to like has had that aha moment maybe they're trying to advance in their in their corporate job or maybe it's just you know they're in a startup phase where they're just like yeah man i would i would love to go pitch in shark tank or take that risk um what would be something that you could tell them as far as a next step on how to how to create those opportunities but ultimately execute on them if you can plan it you can do it it's it's just the thing. A lot of guys they they're entrepreneurs or they're entrepreneurs, like they want to be corporate exec badasses and they talk this big game. But until you actually put it down on paper and make a plan that not only you but other people can follow and be accountable to to be successful, it's not going to happen. Sit down, write it out, shoot holes in your plan, replan it. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You turn your TV off in the evening, and you sit down with a journal. And you write out what success looks like, and then you backwards plan off of that. It, yeah. It's just time. Yeah. Write it out, plan it out, shoot holes in it. Like this is what we did in the military. Hey, we're gonna go like kidnap this guy in the middle of the night, right? That sounds cool. It's really dangerous. We're gonna slide out of a helicopter. How are we gonna do that? And then you're like, all right, this is what success looks like: is everybody on the X with bad guy in tow with a bag over his head getting into the back of a helicopter, and everybody comes home safely. Mm that's really dangerous work. Like yeah. nothing you do in civilian life is going to be that dangerous yet. You planned that mission while you were away from your family, crappy sleep, crappy food, foreign environment, foreign language, and you were successful. Like mm. you can do it here. Just yeah. sit down and plan it out. Like it sounds dumb, but like whenever we run marketing campaigns or whatever, I literally grab the army five paragraph op order Mm. The template and I copy paste it into our company document and I do the same thing I did as a platoon leader for the stuff that I do in my company and we pull off rad stuff like right. you can do it right yeah the, it's kind of what we we're talking about off air the templates are there um you, sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel you just got to plug your idea inside the framework of the roadmap that's already out there and I, I find that when you know, just through my conversations with ambitious vets, as soon as they find that roadmap, to your point, how to identify resources that they've used in the past to, you know, execute on ideas, you know, whatever their ambitions are, you know, sometimes that's, that's the thing is finding the familiarity of what's happened in the past. And once they correlate that in a mindset, man, they're, they're off to the races. So I really like how you articulated that, man. So, um, it sounds like you have done a great job as far as just correlating everything that you guys have gone step by step with combat flip flops and plug it into, okay, what was the army um, resources? What were the templates? What were the leadership traits? What was all this kind of stuff that had us grow successful? Would you agree? I, I agree. I mean, there's, there's some things about the military that are great that lead to being successful. There are other things that are not right. Like <laughs> as far as like planning and execution and expectation setting and, being able to do something safely, like the military is great when it comes down to, you know, leadership. I don't think the military holds the keys on leadership. I don't think they're the ones who are the end all be all just because you were a good sergeant or a good captain or a good colonel does not mean you're going to be a good business leader. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I've seen, I, I've definitely seen that because one of my biggest landmines, we talk about landmines a lot. It's pretty much the things that are stopping us 
to finding fulfilling success that we're looking for, right? And uh, one of one of my personal aim lines when I was getting out of the Marine Corps back in 2012 was communication, man. Um, I had a lot of pride and I came off like a commander. I was that corporal, right? In the Marine Corps that was always telling troops what to do, knife hand and everywhere, you know? And, um, you know, I just, I just could not find a way to input emphasize with people man the the emotional intelligence was just not there and things were not moving because of it because i was socially awkward i was bulldozing people in corporations startup businesses and stuff like that how you know one thing that we brought up inside the uh the pre-interview map was your ability to be vulnerable and be transparent now after four combat tours how could you break it down for an ambitious vet man to actually start feeling and communicating from that way that actually persuades and influences people. Uh, I always, I, I, I take it back to just tools in a toolbox, right? Empathy and emotional intelligence is a tool in a toolbox. Mm. When I joined the military, I did not know how to fire artillery systems. Yeah. Right? But, but artillery systems win the battle. Mm. Like, by the time that I walked out of the military, I could shoot around a 55 pound round out of a 155 millimeter cannon, 18 kilometers through the air, through seven layers of atmosphere and have an impact and like do mm. its job. Right. That was a tool that I spent months learning how to employ effectively for something that I might use maybe 30 to 45 minutes in total in my total army career. Wow. Because when yeah. I needed it, that would have mattered. Yeah, right. absolutely. So when you get out in the civilian world, you have new tools that you need to pick up that are going to be just as important that you're going to need for 30 to 45 seconds, maybe once a week that are going to win the battle for you. Yeah. But if you're too prideful and you don't think they're worth it, then you're going to keep losing battles. And maybe you might listen to this podcast once or twice or three times before it sets in. But I'm telling you, like all the business leaders that are out there today, all the business leaders that have been since the beginning of time, they know that these soft skills are critically important and you need to learn them and learn them as soon as possible. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for that. So Ambitious Vet, we're going to take a brief break to thank our sponsors. We'll be right back in the trenches with Matthew Griffin right after this message. When you have more time on your hands, like right now, don't waste it. Do yourself a favor and fill your mind with knowledge, wisdom, or maybe you just want to find a good old outlet like some A-list comedy. Audible has thousands of titles from podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. Now, what I love about Audible the most is you can fill your mind with information while doing other stuff like hiking, commuting, and maybe just sipping some good old whiskey out back while you watch a sunset. Now, I request you take... Audible for a test drive. Check them out with a 30-day free trial on us here at the Ambitious Vet while simply going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash AMV. All right, Ambitious Vet, we're inside the trenches with Matthew Griffin, the one and only co-founder of Combat Flip Flops um, and one, one, a one million dollar um, retailer of shoes and accessories. We're diving into the trenches. He just talked about how to you know, inspire a more emotional intelligence, how to bring tool sets to certain things and compartmentalize your emotions, which is amazing. But now we're about to shift some gears. Now we're going to dive into why is it important during these times of COVID-19 and quarantine? Why is it so important to work on yourself um, during these times more than ever? And what are some tactics that the CEO of Combat Flip Flops is doing right now. So Matt, man, what, what are you doing right now um, to improve yourself as a leader, um, a co-founder of an organization, a friend, um, you know, a man, stuff like that? How are you improving yourself right now? Uh, so I'll start with most important being a dad, right? It's, it's, it's yeah. a chaotic time for kids, right? They, mm -hmm. their entire life has been upended and they're, they're learning a whole new rhythm. You're learning a whole new rhythm with them. And so how do we establish healthy relationships with our children? Like, yeah. and like, what do I need to do every day? And that's, Hey, find 20 to 30 minutes to go out on a dog walk and just check in and see on what's going on. Get away from everything, get outside. You know, just, just have that. And then just relationally, like making sure that you're, you're not letting your stress pour out into your other relationships. Like you might be freaked out about this, 
right? And the things might be falling apart all over, but just remember everybody is in this together. Everybody is going through this. Like you're not the only one stressed out. You know, you can kind of chill a little bit. Like we are literally all in this together. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, professionally, uh, I love the, uh, the Bruce Lee line within chaos lies opportunity. Mm. It's good, like, man. In like the Chinese symbol for chaos is one is danger and then the other is opportunity. Mm. And like, we've been through some dangerous stuff in our lives, like arguably more dangerous than COVID-19. Like if you're an ambitious vet and you deployed downrange and whether you did training or you did conflict, like all that stuff is inherently more dangerous than what we're facing in our communities right now. And somehow you still grew and thrived, right? You had a good sense of humor about it the entire way. Yeah. Um, and so that's just really what we're focusing on right now is, you know, we've, we've pivoted our systems. Everybody's kind of changed up their lifestyle. They're getting their lives straight. And like, what are the things that, yeah, I really had to take a look at me personally. Like I'm, I do a lot of public speaking. I get hired by a lot of major corporations to go out and, you know, work with people to tell them, Hey, hey man, here's how you kick ass in a dangerous environment. Here's how you mitigate risk. Here's how you, you know, put dream teams together. Like I get, I used to do that. That was my primary source of income. Uh, as a small business owner and it's gone like all of that went away in the drop of a hat hmm. literally at the end of february wow. right so my calendar like i was on the road i flew fifty thousand miles january and february a crazy amount of like flying and traveling from home and now i'm home like yeah. i've never lived in a solitary spot and not traveled this much in my entire adult life i've never done it hmm. And so like sitting back, okay, you're in all of the things that you thought you were going to do in your life were based on conditions that previously existed mm. and all of those conditions are now gone. Right. Every thing or plan that you had for your life, all the paradigms that you based the ability to accomplish those goals are now really murky mm. period. Yeah. So like, it's been a time for me to just sit down and like, Hey, what are the things that I, that I want to accomplish in life. What are the things that have brought me enjoyment over the last 40 years? Have they brought me joy? Have they brought prosperity? Have they brought like togetherness? Have they deepened my relationship with God? Right. And like just writing them all down hmm. and then go, okay, now what do I want to do moving forward? And for me, that's just being more creative. Like I just want to be more creative. And for our company, we want to get better cinematography and imagery. So there's a whole bunch of rules and regulations around drone flying for, uh, for commercial operations. And so I went and got my FAA certification. I went through a training course. I took a master class. I took my test or what all my policies. And so, you know, within a month of this change, now we just, we literally up the value of our marketing department for less than like 200 bucks in eight or 10 hours. Wow. Right. So it's those things. And I got to tell you, my, my garden is banging. Like <laughs> it's awesome. Like my, 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 my house is like a freaking floral wonderland. Like I've been, my roses like are, are popping hot. Like everything is just going off. Like it's great. Like those are things I just enjoy. I'm, my dog is old. He's on here somewhere. Um, you know, and I, I travel a lot. So I felt really bad about traveling. So I just hang out with my dog more. Right? Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. Those are the things you can do. Just find in like uh, in zombie land, find enjoyment in the little things. Yeah, the small things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you said your garden's thriving. Uh, we just moved to our, our new home in Dallas, Texas, and um, we got half grass in our backyard and half, like, dirt and sand. So it's been a great time to plant some rye grass seed and <laughs> grow some seed out there, man. But I definitely can connect with the whole, you know, this is the time to, you know, find ways to slow down, get more creative and stuff like that, man. And uh sounds like you're doing a good job just, you know, not only life, life work balance during these times. And I bet your, you know, kids are super excited to have daddy around a little bit more. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, just, just being able to fill those human capital gaps too, man, as you look at the next level, slow down and figure out, okay, what are some credentials I need? What are some training? What's some experience? What, who is the person that I need to hire? What is it I need to take the brand to the next level? Stuff like that. And I think these are a great time, to your point, to just kind of slow down and just think strategically on like, hey, what's missing? And having us, you know, bridge that desire gap and getting to the next level. And that's, that's some great, great wisdom. So, Matt, man, I'll, yeah. ask <laughs> oh, I'll give one more comment on that. Yeah, <laughs> Excuse me. 
for the military guys that are still into the military lingo, it's yeah. exercising some tactical patience, mm. right? When, when the bullets start flying, everybody wants to react and overreact versus, all right, stop, find out where things are at, where's your positions at, where's your cover, where's your concealment, make a quick plan, disseminate the plan, get it going, right? It's, it's, it's a lot of tactical patience right now. So for guys like us, like we want to be moving. Right. But right now is the time where you understand like being a little bit more still right now will pay benefits in the long term. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for breaking that down, Barney style. Us, us specifically Marines love that kind of language. So thank you for that. Um, so what's next for combat flip-flops, Matt? Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we did a major rebrand in November. So we launched all new products. Um, new website, new imagery, new messaging, a new logo, everything. Uh, and it's really come together over the last you know, two months. We've just really been doing well. Like people don't need shoes in quarantine. So actually we're, we're not doing so bad as a company. And um, our manufacturing got throttled a little bit. You know, they got quarantined. So we just haven't been able to bring in as much product as possible. So it's tough on one hand knowing that we could be doing better. But on the other hand, we're doing better than ever. And it's it's good. Yeah. So we're just going to keep ramping on that. And we're just going to really up our, our, our brand messaging of more inspirational stuff and getting people out there and out in nature, having fun, pushing themselves and uh, expanding their comfort zones. Yeah. That's, that's great because you guys do, you guys have a just cause, right? I'm reading this book called infinity game with Simon Sinek. He's all about talking about the just cause, right? The thing that inspires action. So what would be like that just cause that combat flip flops is, is attacking surging after right now? Um, it's two. It's like, you know, I think everybody's feeling it right now. They can have a little bit of empathy with what happens when something major goes on in your country and you lose your job. Mm. Yeah. All right. Maybe now we can establish some empathy for all of those people who lived in Iraq and Afghanistan and all the other countries we invaded. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe we can do that. Right. And so our, for us getting people back to work the same way Americans want to get back to work is our just cause. Right. But we want to do that in a war zone. So that way our kids don't have to go fight there. And the second one is women's education. Like mm. women are the key. They're not the ones who are going to go immediately going to, to fisticuffs over a disagreement. They're going to talk it out and maybe come to an agreeable comp compromise solution. Um, and then they're generally all the data says it they're better with their money. They're better as business leaders. They're better, better, better. Um, so we are really driven toward empowering women in local communities to do well. Um, and so when we're struggling to get out of bed in the morning and like, Oh, this is going to be hard. Like the image of a little girl sitting in a classroom pokes up in the head and says, Hey, like, dude, get up, get off your ass. Yeah. Like somebody, somebody's depending on you right now for you to do well. So and the other just causes put little kids in school, man. Just, yeah. That's it. Those are the yeah. two creating jobs and putting girls in school. Yeah. That's awesome. So I, just off the, off the cuff, how much, how, how many women in Afghanistan alone? Cause your guys are in Laos and Colombia too as well. Right. Correct. Yeah. So we started making flip flops in Afghanistan. There are some logistical boundaries to making flip-flops in Afghanistan, and I'll just make it real simple. But if you make flip-flops in Afghanistan, by the time they hit the U.S., they're going to be 130 bucks. Wow. That's just, that's just, it's just the math behind it. So nobody's going to buy a $130 flip-flop. So uh, we looked at our mission statement. Didn't say anything about Afghanistan. It says help entrepreneurs affected by conflict, manufacture peace through trade, right? So we moved our stuff to Colombia, war on drugs, narco finance, terrorism, same thing. Mm. So our footwear production is there. Now we make textiles in Afghanistan and we partner with another company to make uh, jewelry in Laos uh, mm. out of recycled landmines from the Vietnam war. Wow. Yeah. So that's Ooh. like the three countries you work in. So that's, it's fun. It's, it's great. Like everybody's cool. Everybody works hard. We make fun stuff. Yeah, man. It's just, um, you know, just coming from, uh, you know, just me having the honor to, you know, have this interview and, run this podcast. I mean, it's just moving, man, to have, um, you know, a guy like yourself that has been in those combat environments four times and, uh, just to go back and get, you know, you know, go and give back and, and go back in those conflict management areas where you're unarmed, <laughs> you're unarmed now and you're fighting a new war, um, from the heart, not, not from like aggression. Um, and uh, man, I just acknowledge you for doing that. Cause that's not always easy. That's just not always easy. Is it? 
It, it's not. You know, it's the, uh, yeah, we're very fortunate in our business that we have a lot of customers and supporters who are like-minded. And so all the blessings we have are because of them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when I was a captain in the Rangers, I never met the president of Afghanistan. Right. But when I was the co-founder and CEO of combat flip-flops, like the founders of our company got invited by the Afghan president to go to New York city and meet with them. It, it's affirming you're doing the right thing. Like it's getting recognized. And in spite of all the government agencies that are flailing and falling down and wasting hundreds of billions of dollars, like there's a little company out there with no money, no budget, right. That's doing the right thing. That's getting the recognition. So it's, and that, and that, and that recognition really goes to all of our customers and supporters. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it just, um, it, my mind goes back to just, you know, just, you know, the uniform ambitious vet, it, it serves a purpose, right? Um, and when you get out, there's a new purpose to find. And, uh, you know, Matt at Combat Fit Flops has found a way to find a new purpose uh, to, to serve, and he's serving at a very high level. So, Matt, man, back to you. We have a tradition inside the show three golden grenades, man. What would you drop in right now, wisdom bombs, to any, you know, ambitious vet that's three plus years out of the military is uh, just dealing with some lack of satisfaction, fulfillment, trying to find that sense of purpose that you have found, man. What would be three golden grenades you could unpack and force right now? Patience. Uh, it's, it's, it's patience, guys. I mean, it's like the average you know, adult goes through like five or six jobs before they really find what they want to do in their life. Like, don't be discouraged. Don't. Um, and just, just keep that in your mindset. And I, I always treated it like the military is two years up and over. Whatever job you get in, learn as much as you can while you're there for two years. Strive to be successful. Strive to make everybody else around you successful. That's how you become successful. Right. Mm -hmm. And then two years out, be looking to move up in responsibility and over in job responsibility. So you're building your portfolio. I mean, I work for a home building company. I work for a medical sales company. I work for a consulting company. I work for a technical cleaning and repair company. I work, you know, I, I did all of these different things, but I graduated up in responsibility and then I diversified my, my knowledge of how to run a business. And then when I was 34 years old, Right. Then I was like, okay, I'm ready to do this on my own. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Take your time. And then I'll, I'll be really candid and say like, I don't feel like I hit my flow. Like I knew what I was doing until last year, until I was 40. Wow. And if you read all the big business books and the number one is, uh, wow. Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. Right. There are so many case studies about, people who were not successful until they hit 40. Why do you think that is? Just make all the mistakes when you're younger. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good, man. I mean, and it's great that you have hit that stride um, a year ago, but you know, just, I, just you going in and, and being able to go into shark tank and uh, win over three sharks. I mean, that's, that's a lot of, a lot of ambitious vets dreams, man. And just for you to overcome what you had to overcome to, to get to that level and stand there confidently and bold. I've, I think I've watched the episode at least a few times. And Ambitious Vet, if you haven't seen the episode, I encourage you to go. I'll probably put the link in the show notes below for you to go and watch it. Just really impressive stuff. And I, I remember seeing Mark Cuban's face. I like business over boards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just like, it's a done deal, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the second hand grenade is uh, treat your body like you're going to live in it for the rest of your life. Nice. Wow. Uh, it, it's, you are, right? The military gives you horrible workout habits. They give you horrible eating habits, horrible sleep habits. And you're not getting paid to work out two hours every day anymore. Like you're not getting the, the three meals when somebody serves you like decently okay food that's meant for your caloric output for the day. Mm. Like you are now responsible for your management of your health and welfare. And I always go back and I think of my first commander, Brandon Tegmeyer, who just recently left as the commander of the regiment. And he says, your ability to lead is directly related to your level of physical fitness. Mm. Right. Over time, people who you know, maintain themselves and maintain their bodies can lead better over time. And if you're going to be an entrepreneur or a successful person, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. Like, you need to keep yourself physically fit. And it doesn't mean like 
you can't put on a little layer of insulation. That's fine, right? But it's it's okay. <laughs> good so, day, good like, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I got my apocalypse coat on. I'm good, right? Uh, but no, you need to. You don't need to run five miles at a you know eight minute mile pace anymore. But you need to get out and exercise. Like you should be doing yoga. You don't need to be throwing huge weights around because you're not going to be body slamming another human being. Mm. on command you're 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 going to be climbing up and around and doing things so you might not need to stack on all that muscle and put all that weight on for that but you need to maintain your body eat right sleep right so that way you can perform over time because it is a long haul yeah that's great that's that's awesome brother um yeah so that's i mean i'm I'm thinking about that and i'm just like wow i mean um you know i i still do be i'm doing beach body man at the, every single day outside back every morning and um Man, this is when you get your phys- physiological system going. I think sometimes um, you just you're thinking in a more productive mindset. Because I don't know about you, but I think one of my biggest landmines, which a lot of ambitious fests that listen to this podcast already know, but it's like self doubt. Man, I wake up with an overwhelming sense of fear and self doubt, and it's not until I get like a good run in or a workout that gets my body going that gets those fear hormones out of the way. Man, so what would what would uh, what would be that last golden grenade that you could bring in here, man, to, uh, to drive it home? Self-talk. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, right? just, just off of what you just said. Oh, my gosh. That's great. So how do you, how do you leverage self-talk? For- um, so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there. You can watch the, 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 the secret, right, the law of attraction, all of those other things, right? But there is some science behind it it does back it up. Right. And again, as we were talking about emotional intelligence, this is another one of those tools and arguably it's the most important tool for you to manifest the reality that you desire. Mm. Right. Cause if in your head, the first thing you think is I'm going to fuck that up. You have a much higher likelihood of fucking it up than if the first thought in your head was this may be difficult and I may not get it perfect, but I know that I'm going to do it. And every time I do it, I'm going to get better. Mm. Yeah you have a much higher likelihood of success, right? So when it's just mindfulness and meditation helps with that. But as soon as you catch that thought in your head, you go, was that a positive thought about being successful, being ambitious, like seeing the win that's leading me more toward my win? Or is that a, a thought that is leading me away from the goals that I have? And if it is, it's totally fine. But you stop and you go, nope, you're not welcome here anymore. I'm going to retrain myself again, just the same way. Like if you were doing a drill in the army and a firearms drill and you were doing your trigger squeeze incorrectly, mm-hmm. right? Somebody is going to come over to you and go, Hey man, that is the worst thing you could be doing for your accuracy is squeezing the trigger incorrectly. Mm-hmm. Let's move your finger like an eighth of an inch out to the right and let's get a couple hundred reps in. So that way you got it down. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things. It just takes repetition to talk to yourself positively. And so like, nope, I screwed that up before. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to screw it up again. Next time I will be better, faster, and it'll be worth more, right? Yeah, that's great, man. Um, I think a lot of veterans deal with that. Um, deal with the you know, the opposite of like negative thinking. You know, they don't have their, their fire teams around them anymore to like keep them moving forward. So I think that's a good reminder of just how to start having more self-control, how to slow down your thoughts and find ways to be more mindful in your everyday life. And I think that that would really make a difference. So, well, I mean, so if, if you go to like the basis of it, I think where a lot of us veterans get it yeah. is our entire job is predicated on fear. Mm. Right? Right. Our entire job is to close with and destroy the enemy, which is a fear, <laughs> which is a fear based action. I don't care who you are. Everybody has a level of fear when it comes to it. Oh, yeah. Um, and then all of your subtasks in that are to prevent the loss of a friend or yourself, right? So you're identifying risks with the worst possible outcome every step of the way. Mm. So you're constantly seeing bad stuff that could happen, right? And you're constantly moving pieces around to mitigate all the negative things with huge ramifications. I never right. thought about it like that. That's so true, brother. Yeah, and like, oh my gosh, yeah. It, it occupies up so much of your operational space, mm-hmm. right? And the guys are the most su- successful in the military 
are the ones that identify all of those bad things before everybody else does and they make actions to mitigate those risks. Yeah. Now, when you get out of the military, that skill set is highly valuable, right? Being able to walk into an operation and go, hey, like, that's a risk that's going to prevent the operation from being successful. But the negative ramification of it is, isn't your buddy's going to die and you're going to be holding a tourniquet while he bleeds out. The ramification is, hey, like, we have a wrong decimal on a spreadsheet somewhere. Being able to spot that. Right. And so right. Tuning, tuning your level down on that and providing more room for positive, re-encouraging, you know, mind space of like, hey, we're going to be successful. This is the picture of success. Beating that into your team, beating that into everybody who's around you, like seeing it, feeling it, writing it down, communicating it all the time, right, is going to lead you to that. But you're still going to need that risk identifier, but the outcomes are nowhere near as bad as they used to be. So it's okay to let that go, like throttle back like 90%. Yeah. Right. And allow that other room to be more positive. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. That's a great analogy. And um, I think, uh, you know, who are ambitious if you're listening to this, um, I have probably like a page of notes here um, that new way of looking at risk mitigation and how to transfer that skill set. Um, into our everyday life. I know I'm going to take that one on. So Matt, man, where can people go to find out more about combat flip-flops? What's next for you and your journey and all that good stuff? Where can people go and find you, man? Uh, so what's, if you want to find us, everything's combat flip-flops, right? So website's combatflipflops.com. All of our social, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Snap it. Everything is at combat flip-flops. Um, what's next for us? Uh, we're just planning a whole bunch of fun marketing stuff. Like we, we, we got a big summer planned. And so we got some big aerial cameras and some badass dudes. And so the stuff is going to, it's going to be legit. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm, I'm really getting stoked for this summer, being able to like film and put everything together. Uh, and that's, that's just it. And if you want to follow those adventures, you can follow me on Instagram at combat flip flops dot griff G R I F F. Perfect. And ambitious vet that all those links will be in the show notes below. So make sure that right after the show or right now, go down and click and connect with this man. This man has proven to win over the sharks and also build a one over a million dollar retail company. So if you're looking to either get some flip flops or get more engaged with their mission or promote it, you know, get connected with them. Matt, man, I just want to thank you, brother, for being a man that served in the uniform and is still serving outside of it, brother. I mean, just your heart and how you took four deployments, wrapped it all up, let it go and put it back in the past, man, and, and now is serving humanity as a whole, man, and your vulnerability moves me every time I talk to you, brother. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Chris. Have a great day, and best of luck to everybody out there. Go get it. Let's rock. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to VetTrainingCoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Again, today's show was brought to you by Brew Force. If you're ready to get creative with your functional fitness during these challenging times and the fitness apps are just not cutting it, train accordingly with Brew Force today. Simply click the link in the show notes below and you'll be off to the races.